Council for Monday, May 22nd, 2023, to order. Mr. Lauer, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Shinnepel? I'm here. Dr. Prosco? Here. Mr. Curry? Here. Mr. Kozer? Here. Mr. Steigen? Here. Mr. Lewis? Here. Mr. Ross? Here. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the meeting of May 8th. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Talk about the minutes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. 7 0, Mr. Lauer. Next time, a special reports of which there are none. So we'll move right into audience comments. This is the portion of the meeting where any member of the audience can speak for up to five minutes on a non agenda item. There's a big crowd here today, so I'm guessing there are some people who want to speak. So first up. Could, could you do me a favor and put your name and address on that pad? For you, Paul? For me? I think it's not for me. <laughs> no, you said do me a favor. So. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And you aren't being singled out. We're going to ask everybody to do that. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time you singled me out, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're here. Okay, um, can you also state your name and just yeah. so it's on the tape, please? So my name is Doug Coney. I live at 119 Ridgeview Drive. And we were notified by the township of, of course, we know about the roundabout going in, but notified about the commercial uh, building going up. Um, and a lot of us has, have a number of concerns. Uh, last time we, we came, we actually met with the planning department. Um, and it sort of just fizzled out for a while. and. Uh, we don't know what the status is now other than it's back on, assumedly because you're putting a roundabout in. Um, concerns. My yard and a lot of my neighbor's yards is a floodplain. Um, we always have problems. We're having erosion. Now, the township a little while ago down, uh, and Paul, you'll, you'll probably remember this, down uh, Valley Brook Road towards the dairy bar from Bebout, they put a bunch of riprap in because the erosion was so bad, I think that sewer was in jeopardy of, <clears throat> of failure into the creek. Um, so the issues we have, they're going to put a retention pond in. I've lived there 25 years. They'd have to put a reservoir in to stop the runoff they're going to have. Um, and that's going to impact all of us down there. Uh, with not just erosion, but with flooding. Um, we're also concerned about light infiltration. You know, we can see the lights from boys' baseball fields, um, although the trees are growing and that's going away. But you're going to clear this, and you're going to have this back parking lot, this garage, and it doesn't affect me as much as it does some of my neighbors who look directly at it. Um, so there's certainly concern about being able to sit outside without glaring light into your, into your eyes. There's, and then there's the noise. My understanding is that the it's allowed to have after our deliveries and in our neighborhood that you know it's been there since the early 70s maybe even before then my house was built in i think 72 or 3. Um, somebody wants to hear a bunch of trucks backing up at eight o'clock at night or nine o'clock at night or so we have those concerns with the traffic with deliveries with um, certainly the light, and I think the big deal, is the runoff and the erosion. Uh, I think that's all I have for now. We're going to, we, we would ask, Paul, I'm going to ask, we would like to meet with somebody. Well, in fact, that's what I was going to suggest. The, the reason why everybody got a notification is that as soon as something is filed with the planning department, um, there's a notice sent out to let people know that there's a plan out, out there. This plan uh, is going to take a recommendation from the Planning Commission and approval by Council. In all likelihood, we do not believe the plan is ready to go to the Planning Commission yet, so it probably isn't going to the Planning Commission until July, is that correct? So what we have is an opportunity between now and then, and we'd be uh, more than willing and, and happy to sit down with the neighbors and go through that plan, and if there are suggestions on how that plan might be improved to, to uh, uh, better address the concerns of, of the neighborhood, you know, that would be something that we can certainly take into account. 
Um, it's always better to do these things early in the process as opposed to late in the process. So now would be a great time to do that. So, Paul, and Paul, that's why we're here. Yeah. So, Paul, I would suggest, as it was probably a number of years ago, this property was posed for development mm -hmm. to, to revisit in your own staff the reports and the findings that were out there. Now, maybe you've already done that, but I can remember several of the residents coming in and talking, and their concerns, I think, are going to be mirrored again with what is. We haven't seen it. Yeah, no, we're, I understand. We're sitting Paul. here in the blank, so. Yeah, oh, no, I understand. And, and why we're at council, we got the notification, and Paul hit it on the head. We want to get in front of this. Look, I'm, I'm not telling you we're trying to stop it. I'm sure we'd rather it not go in. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I watched them fill that in. Do I think it was compacted? Probably not. You know, but that's that's their construction issues that they'll have to deal with if they start getting slips and slides and whatever. But we're the ones have to deal with the other. So I certainly appreciate your time. Um, and why don't you do this? Why do you? Because you, you got to get a hold of me. Yes. <laughs> why don't you uh, get a hold of me and let's find a a date and time that works for most people. And we can all sit down and, and go through the plan. So. Okay, and, and, and Bob, yeah, I'd, I'd like to get bring Bob in, because he's the guy that will affect more oh, than me. Yeah, so. Yes. Well, again, I appreciate council's time, and I don't know if anybody else has anything. But. Huh? Yeah. My name is Bob Marsick. Oh, I live at 105 Ridgeview directly behind where the uh, building is going to go and also directly behind where uh, all the uh, stormwater culverts are going to empty into the creek. Now, I'm already having a problem. I've only been living here for about two and a half years, and I'm already having a problem with the corner of our property getting eroded away from the water, from the rain, uh, the heavy rains and everything. The creek just swells up a lot. Uh, Everybody else further down from me, their yards kind of slope down into the level. They just back up over top of their lawns and it kind of runs off. Whereas mine, it's on a corner and it's just digging it away and digging it away. Uh, I have, I have, you know, a, a built-in pergola. I have an in-ground pole and everything there. I'm just a little concerned. Eventually, it's going to start undermining, and I'm going to start losing property and things in my yard. Uh, and like Doug said, you know, we're not here, you know, you know, we'd like to see it not happen, believe me, because it's just going to be a big dinosaur, you know, big white elephant that everyone's going to be looking at back here. Between the lights, no trees, uh, and I know they're going to have landscaping done and everything, but face it, they're not going to be putting in 40-foot trees that's going to cover up like what we have here now. Uh, it, it just it concerns me that you're, you're going to divert all this groundwater now that used to seep into the ground is now going to just be running down through pipes and empty right into the creek and swell it up quicker. I don't see how it's going to, you know, prevent anything from getting worse down there. Uh, just uh, the, the dumpsters, the noise with the dumpsters and the, the deliveries is going to be a concern. The lighting is a concern. Uh, also, I, I just don't understand why they're going to have to put underground parking in and dig down against that road and take a chance of, you know, jeopardizing the road stability right now. It's up there. I know there's an eight-foot sidewalk coming in. I guess the building's going to sit back maybe another couple feet behind that. But you see all the time these places that do all this type of work like this, things fail. You can have the engineers do as much work as they want and, and design work, but still, you know, Mother Nature is going to take over and do what she wants to do. You know, Lincoln Point up there in Bethel Park, they had a building that failed. <coughs> Linden View, where I used to live in Peters Township, they had a big issue down there with ground feeling. Uh, Washington down there at the foundry down there, they had a building that failed because of backfill and everything. You know, things are designed and signed off on, but. I don't know if they take the consideration of what can possibly happen. I just wanted to bring that up, just my concerns about that. And uh, it'd be good if we do have a meeting and get together and sit down and kind of get things taken care of. 
Uh, if we do have problems down the road after it's built, who's going to be responsible for doing anything for the property owners? You know, especially if, if issues are brought up at this time. So that's all I have to say. I do have some videos of uh, maybe it's not the time to show this, but I have some videos of the last you know storm that we had come through, and it it went from a five foot wide creek to probably about thirty foot wide, and probably about six eight foot deep which just, you know, covered up everybody's lawns going downstream. Well, I think we're all familiar with what, right. what it I mean, looks like it further on down here. But Yeah, so. you see it down here. Yeah, well, it starts at our place and ends up down here. So you're familiar with it, but it just, it's just eating up the properties. So thank you for your time, and look forward to getting together with everybody and thank you, sir. discussing it. I'm Barbara Varani. I live at 138 Highview at the top of Orchard Highlands. I worry with this construction with 110 parking spots, medical offices and a bakery and a retail. I estimate you're going to have another 400 cars a day going in and out of there. That's a lot of traffic right outside of a roundabout. And I imagine that when the cars are coming out of the roundabout, coming up Bebout from Valley Brook, they're gonna be spitting out of there like water seeds, watermelon seeds. We have one way in and out of our neighborhood. One road. Taking a left on there after this construction and proposed added traffic Sounds like it's gonna be really hard to take a left turn. It's our only way in and out of the neighborhood. Now, listening to my neighbors talking about their land eroding and the creek tells me that their property values will go down. That means my property value goes down too. I'm not happy. I'm not happy with that prospect at all. So I am very interested in what you're going to do about traffic control, especially with the volume of cars proposed to go in and out every day. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak? Uh, yeah, I will. Um, my name is Barbara Fisher, and I actually don't live in the neighborhood. I'm at, um, on Clara Lane. And I just wanted to also voice our concern about the traffic. I've lived in Peters Township my whole life. I'm fifth generation, something like that. And the, the traffic anymore around the township is horrendous. Um, you can't get out of, like, if you're a tracks farm, you can't get out on the tracks road. And, you know, at the top of Churchill and um, Sugar Camp, it's horrible. You know, if they put this in, it's just, like she said, more traffic. And I certainly can feel for the people that live in Orchard Highlands, you know, how awful that's going to be, how the lights, the extra traffic and all that stuff in the water. It's just, you know, somewhere along the line here, we have to kind of put a, a slow, slow down all our development until some of our infrastructure gets caught up. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Hi, my name is Steve Simcoe. I live at 119 Meadowbrook Circle, which is also directly behind where the, the new proposed building is going to be. I live at Caddy Corner to, to Bob over here. Um, we've lived there for about 20 years, and I was there when Hurricane Ivan came rolling through. And it was <laughs> more than 30 foot wide at that point. It was pretty much involved the entire valley. And I'm sure you guys remember all the downstream damage that caused. I thought that this was a 100-year floodplain area where we could not build, but evidently that was, that's not true. Um, the other thing that I wanted to, was questioning is we have the property at the old middle school that was going to be 
part of the Peters Township Town Square Town Center. Could we not be putting some of those buildings, this development there and focusing there instead of trying to squeeze a building along a thin strip in a residential neighborhood? You need to go across the street and ask the school board. <laughs> that had been our vision. Yeah. Well, that'd be great. Oh, the school board. The school board's not giving you the property. Well, it's not. Well, they were never going to give anybody the property. What they there was talk at one point in time that the school district would sell that piece of property. They have decided to hold on to it, and that's why the Washington County Intermediate Unit is now located in there. Okay, that makes no sense. So they're just holding on to property that has that's no use. Well, but that well, that's not a decision that's made here. That's. That's a decision made by the school board. Well, with all the plans that we had envisioned, was that that was going to be the town center, and then you could develop that and be more in the, more in the center of East McMurray and Valley Brook, the more commercial uh, side of things. So, um, with the developments that we're putting on Sugar Camp, more residential neighborhoods going in there, um, just to add on to the, the concern with the traffic. I know that the roundabout should help a little bit, but it is going to be a challenge whenever you're coming out of a roundabout and then you're trying to make a left into uh, a, a new building here is going to probably bog down the, the traffic circle. So I do appreciate the fact that we're looking to have a meeting and, and talk about this because I, I think you're getting the gist that most people are not in favor of it um, and we'd like to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation on this topic and try to try to get ahead of this as everybody else has said. So. Thank you very much for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Anybody else want to speak? Okay, seeing no one, we will move on to unfinished business, of which there is none, so we'll move right into the new business. First is approval for recording purposes of the Mecrono subdivision as shown on drawings prepared by the Harshman CE Group dated May 8, 2023 for Anthony Mecrinus. This is a uh, simple subdivision. It's a 10-acre parcel uh, that's owned by John and Susanna. Uh, Marquinos, uh, they're looking to uh, subdivide it um, into two five-acre parcels. Um, uh, if council will recollect, this came to you before because there's a need to be able to access that parcel with an easement um, on the lot that's shown in blue up there. Once this subdivision is approved and recorded, uh, one of the conditions before issuing a building permit is that that e easement will be created and recorded. So it's going to be my recommendation that council approve the Marquita subdivision subject to the recommendations of the Peter Township Planning Commission. I'll make a recommendation the Karina subdivision as shown in the drawings prepared by Harshman CE Group dated May 8, 2023 for Anthony. The Karina is subject to the conditions recommended by the Planning Commission. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 7 0, Mr. Lauer. Next item resolution authorizing the submittal of a grant application to the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development for a grant under the Watershed Restoration and Protection Program for partial funding of the Briarcliff Stream Restoration Project. So, Peters Township is mandated by the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection to maintain an MS4 permit. That per permit uh, obligates the township to complete a number of projects designed to remove sediment and phosphorus loading in the Brush Run Creek. We need to do one of these projects every five years. The challenge is that none of these kind of projects are, are uh, inexpensive uh, to complete. And um, we have been um, looking for outside funding to assist us with that. So the engineer's estimate is that the project will cost about $750,000. Uh, the Marcellus Legacy Fund has money allocated uh, for the, these types of projects. The maximum grant under that um, uh, program is $300,000, and that's what we will be applying for. It's my recommendation that Council approve Resolution 5423, authorizing the submittal of a grant application to the Pennsylvania Department of Community Development. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 7 0, Mr. Lauer. Next item resolution amending the Community Recreation Center rules and policies. So, um, after a discussion with council, there was concern about the $1 fee that is assessed to individuals. 
who don't show up for their membership card what this resolution does is is remove um, uh, the obligation to collect that fee the other thing that I should tell you is um, having looked into this right now if you take your membership card and you take a picture of it on your phone that barcode will read and you can you can enter the building that way the other thing we're looking at is uh, the company that provides the software that is used to track memberships uh, actually has the ability now to issue membership cards electronically. And so we're gonna look at implementing that. So you'd get a, a physical card, but you would get a membership card that would be a QR code that would be on your phone. So uh, I think as somebody pointed out, I think kids may not have a buck on them, but they always have their phone mm -hmm. on them. So I think that would be a way to handle that. Absolutely. Someone wanna make a motion? We adopt resolution 050523. Amending Community Recreation Center Rules. Yeah, I'll second that. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 7-0, Mr. Lauer. Next item, award of a contract for the Community Recreation Center Interior Renovation Project. So the, the 2023 budget includes an allocation of $243,000 for interior renovations of the Community Recreation Center. Bids uh, included work was the painting of the gym space as well as the, um, the replacement of the uh, mats that, that are in the gym uh, at the basketball areas, the replacement of the carpeting and flooring tile on the main floor as well as on the second floor. Um, we took bids in two different ways. One, if somebody wanted to do the entire project, they could bid it. We also took uh, bids off of individuals who were only interested in doing part of the work. Uh, the one that is clear to us that we want to be recommending is um, the award of the bid for the painting uh, to Saints Painting in the amount of $96,316. The second part of this is the replacement of the flooring. Clearly the flooring in the, and the uh, hallway and the entrance needs to be replaced. Um, I, I, there's a there's also a tile floor inside of the restroom areas. It's my opinion that that floor is intact and it's still in, in good shape. It's been there since the, uh, since the uh, building's been open. But in fairness to, um, yeah. to Ryan and Michelle who have worked on this project, they would like to see that, um, that tile replaced additionally. So yeah. if, and I think the reason, if you were to do it, you would have an updated uh, look inside of those those restrooms. But in terms of functionality, um, what's there, in fact, is is fine. So yeah, my my one recommendation then is to award St. Uh, Paint a uh, contracting well, amount of ninety six thousand three hundred six sixteen dollars for painting the gym floors. <clears throat> And, and council well, can take action on that. It's not part. the gym sure. floors. It's I mean the, the gym, gym walls. Thank you. Do you mean, do you mean of the padding? Yeah, do you mean maybe ABS because Saints didn't bid? That was the issue with Saints. They didn't bid the um, the padding replacement. Oh, that excuse was, me. Yeah, that was ABS yeah. was the, uh, as default was the low bidder because Saints did not bid the completed yeah. project. So why um, don't we have Saints in there? Because I, I made a they, Well, they actually, I mean, they did bid it, so we just showed their yeah. bid, but, you know, uh, the reality is they didn't bid complete work. Well, um, how much is the other guy's bid? 112. 112, 647. But he, what Ryan's saying, this is my mistake. Um, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. All right, I'll make a motion that we award the uh, painting of the gym and replacement of the padding to, is it ABS Buildings. Building Systems? Yes. For a price of one hundred twelve thousand six hundred forty-seven dollars. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Say nay. Seven zero, Mr. Lauer. Next item: award of a professional services contract to Gable. No, no, the second thing would be the award oh, for sorry. the flooring. Yeah. If you wanted to include everything, including the floors in the in the bathrooms, it'd be $126,100. If you want to leave that out, it's $94,600. Yeah. yeah, and this is certain, certainly not something I'm going to lose any sleep over. I know this is just um, where Paul and I, uh, you know, I, I totally understand his perspective. I mean, $31,500 is, is certainly nothing to 
what you know um, sneeze at in terms of an expense I, I do think there's um, the importance of sort of consistently just doing the project completing it and being done with it because the reality is those tile floors in the bathroom you're probably looking at three to seven years coming back and having to redo those um, Steinberger is a firm we've had a tremendous amount of success with they've always been um, very responsive their coordination is fantastic they've actually worked with ABS building systems as a subcontractor in the past but I Again, I understand Paul's perspective. Either way, if you, if you want to do the whole project or you want to come back later and do the restroom flooring, I don't have any strong feelings on it, truthfully. I just, I, like I said, I think one of the things that I remember is, especially with the library, the first floor, we did a portion of that and then we had to come back later and do the remainder. And in between, you have new carpet right up against old carpet. And it just kind of looks funky for a building that is designed for public use, so. Ryan, yeah. my experience tells me, and I don't know in this particular instance, but toilet partitions in the <laughs> restrooms, locker rooms, and things like that usually look pretty seedy after 20 years. Well, and those have been replaced. What the floors in the uh, restrooms look like. Yeah. The, the partitions, I believe, have been replaced. They're fairly yeah. new. Yeah. It's the flooring that ha that's original to the building when it was constructed in 03. Council can do whatever either yeah. way. I mean, I think we should just do it all. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be cheaper. You got them up, everybody up there. The labor's up there. Get mm -hmm. it over with, and it. it'll all look consistent, and it'll be done. Is this? Yeah. Am I doing the math right? It's still on our budget, though, right? Yes, yes it is. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, who's going to move all the partitions up and put them back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who is going to do that? Uh, the Steinberg. Steinberg. That's part of his scope. Mm hmm. So, Ryan, you said 31000 but on this is saying an amount of 94600 The amount that you would be awarding to do the entire project is $126,100. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the, so, yeah, the, okay. the 30000 is They're only... Not this yeah. yeah, that's okay. that's the difference. All right, so I'll, I'll make a motion to award the con a contract be awarded to Steinberger Floors in the amount of... 94,600 to replace oh. flooring as included as a base bid as well as alternative number two. Second. Well, you know, I thought we were. Uh, I thought we were doing the restaurant. Number, it's number one, if, isn't if it? If the motion simply is to award the base bid in both alternates, you'll have done it at 126.1. Yeah. All right, Dr. Perosco, uh, you want to amend your motion in that way? Contract be awarded to Steinberger Floors for the amount of. One hundred twenty-six thousand dollars. One hundred dollars. Replace the flooring is included. The base bid is alternate number two. And yeah, and alternate number one. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Seven zero, Mr. Lauer. Now, award of a professional services contract to <laughs> Gateway Engineers for the design of the Peterswood Park baseball infield turf project. So. <clears throat> As you are aware, we are the recipients of a RCAP grant for improvements on ball field number one and ball field number two. One of the things that the, the Baseball Association would like to do is to put artificial uh, infields on both of those fields. Previously, we attempted to work with the Baseball Association to do that to field two, so that design was already done by Gateway Engineers. So what makes sense to me is to allow Gateway uh, to use that information as well as to do the design for, for field number one. The reason why it's being done on a time and material basis with an upset price is that it is not clear to us what are the environmental regulations that are come, going to come into play yeah. with regard to the stormwater uh, off of these two fields. When it was only field number two, this was relatively simple because the area of disturbance was small, but when you combine the two together, normally that gets us in, into permitting from the Washington County Con uh, Conservation District. We're gonna have discussions with them once we get Gateway uh, under contract to find out whether or not there's a way uh, to avoid that, so. So it's my recommendation that we award a professional services contract to uh, Gateway Engineers on a time and material basis for an amount not to exceed $40,000. When we looked at field two, the bids that came in for the scope of work were extraordinarily high. 
Well, this was not a project that was proposed by the township. This was a project that was proposed by the Baseball Association. And when it when that bid came in, it was much higher than the Baseball Association was prepared to pay at that time. This, uh, it, I think what makes this possible is the fact that we have this RCAP grant. So well, I, I think my only question is if Gateway did the design for the other ball field, is there something in that design that needs to be thought through to make it more economical? Well, we could take a look at that, but I, I think what was not understood when we first started this is the amount of work that needs to be done to collect the storm water. The, 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 um, there was a significant expense that was uh, associated with the drainage system needed to be able to handle field number two. And you're gonna run into that same thing on field number one. And it's gonna be worse if in fact we have to do storm water management out there. Yeah. You know better than I do. What do you think this is going to run? I mean, somebody got to give you an idea. I, I don't know it until we design it. And that's what we're trying to do. We have all this money, but we're, we can't move forward with the RCAP grant in terms of an application and an agreement until we have engineered, at least partially engineered drawings so that we can submit to the state of Pennsylvania certified estimates and so till somebody takes this and begins to draw it we, we can't move forward we have numbers on on the light um, mm -hmm. what that's going to cost we have a pretty good understanding about what the improvements to the restrooms and the um, the concession stands are going to be we're meeting very shortly with the architect that the, that the township has engaged to do the press boxes and dugouts and so we're going to be in a position very shortly to, to know those prices until someone actually begins to design this. I don't think we're going to have a, a, a engineer's estimate that we can submit. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the, right now what you're looking at as a minimum is we 650000 is what we got from the RCAP program. We have to match that with 650000 of our own money or partial the score, whoever. You know, so you're at least looking at a $1.3 million project and that would, in total. That would mean we'd have to do the entire project, even if the entire project was more than that. Yeah. No, well, no. In fact, what yeah. we want to do is get these estimates and um, make sure the project fits in line with mm -hmm. the grant that we received yeah. and the budget so that, that that's the amount that we're spending on these fields, not more than what, what we've received grants for. I just don't see the utility of, of making infields turfed and the outfield being, you know, stained grass. I mean, that makes absolutely no sense to me. Oh, you uh, see it all over the place on, yeah, on baseball fields yeah. now. And what it does is it eliminates um, the problems you have in the springtime with being able to play on the fields when it's been raining in the wet conditions. So you never lose. The, it's sort of like the soccer fields up above. You know, you can play all the time on those soccer fields because there's no damage to the field by virtue of the fact that it had rained, and that's what that does for both yeah. of these fields. The other thing we're looking at is potentially using us for Pony League World Series satellite. So, I mean, so there's a huge upside to having this. I mean, you have it in Upper St. Clair, uh, Mount Lebanon. Do we, get paid? do we get paid to sponsor those games, and how much do we get paid? Or is this another fifty dollar thing so that we do well, for the PIAA? The and money. For the Pony League, we would. Yeah, and they, they charge seven would be able to charge seven dollars uh, a head just to get in. That money doesn't come to the township. Yeah, the money goes to the Whipples. In fact, we just had a problem out there. Our free parking they were charging the park in our parking spaces. <laughs> which when? uh they oh, just yeah, had a game out there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I explained yeah, to them that we can't do that on our parking lots. I wonder if they were charging the park on the grass, too. All right, let's All move right. this yeah. along. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'll make a recommendation. Peters awards the professional services contract for Peters Lewis Park Baseball into a project to gateway engineers on a time and material basis, an amount not to exceed $40,000. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? 
if we approve this, we're not committing to doing the project. Oh no, the, all right. these projects got to go out and be bid, and yeah. or there has to be some type of you know uh, approval by council to do any of these projects. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Seven zero, Mr. Lauer, payroll and bills, Dr. Perosco. Uh, I have reviewed payrolls and bills in good uh, standing order. Make a motion to approve. A second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed, say nay. Seven zero, Mr. Lauer. Correspondence, Mr. Lauer. Anything we need to discuss? Yes, I just want to point this out to you. Um, there's a letter in your docket from uh, the Peter Street Sanitary Authority. The um, you know there's a preliminary plan approved uh, for the Froby Farm. When that plan was approved, it envisioned gravity flow sewers uh, across the neighboring property. Um, that property owner and um, uh, Eddie Holmes have not been able to come to an agreement about that. Um, it's our position that we are not uh, going to consider a plan uh, until such time as the developer and Peter Street Sanitary Authority can come to some type of agreement about how these lots are going to be sewered. What's being proposed is a pump station. Uh, Peter Street Sanitary Authority would like to uh, not have that if they can if they can avoid it. And so. Um, I think at their June meeting, they're going to have a meeting with the developer to talk about what can and can't happen with this property. So, but. Uh, This is such a significant development. I don't think you want to get burdened with a pump station. That's the position of the Peter Creek Sanitary Authority. I seldom agree with them, but in this case, I think that's well, correct. If that doesn't go through, think of all the traffic you're keeping off the road. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree with you, Frank. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I feel about it. That's ridiculous. All right. Anyway, you want to discuss any of the various uh, committee or board reports or minutes? I'd like to commend two groups. One, oh, there you go. Ryan for his financial summary we got. And uh, we have a new public works director, and I would have to say that I was impressed with the work product that was yeah, recently put up. That was actually one of the things I wanted to bring up to council, you know, and I, I think Jared would tell you this is still a work in progress, but yeah. I think it better captures what, what the uh, Public Works Department accomplishes um, uh, within a month. But, you know, the other thing is, you know, there's, there's always been this question about what's happening on certain days. There's actually a, a weekly, uh, a, uh, section in there that kind of uh, describes the, the various projects that they've been working on. So I, I think you're going to have a much better understanding. Are these viewable by the public? Yes, yes. they're on. They're all on the website. Yeah. Okay. And did anyone else appreciate McMurray Road get getting paved on the South Bank? <laughs> Took long enough. Should have been done last fall. Anything under miscellaneous, Mr. Lauer? Yeah, I have a couple of things I just want to bring council up to date on. Um, the assisted living um, facility that was proposed for down on East McMurray Road, uh, I want to give um, uh, Mr. Coons and Mr. Zomitis credit. You know, this was the original plan that was submitted when they were going in for a special exception. That plan was modified so that that roadway was pulled away from the homes up above and the, the eventual connection onto the other property was brought closer to East McMurray Road. It does a couple things. One, it, it, it shrinks the amount of public road that's there, but the other thing is it provides for uh, an 80-foot cul-de-sac so that that road will be uh, eligible for a liquid fuels fund. The, the, the other good thing about this uh, is that if you look in the upper right-hand corner of, of the development, at that point, there's no reason to remove or grade back into that area that's up against people's property. So, you know, it's going to be a large facility and it's certainly going to be visible, um, but there, there will be a significant buffer, natural buffer that, that exists uh, if this moves ahead this, in this fashion. So, so that's a fill going uphill? Uh, it's a cut, cut slope. It's, it's a massive hillside as you get to the top right hand corner of the property. Previously, with the road at the top, and they were lopping off the top of the hill to drop the cul de sac in, but now they're just cutting into that hillside to, to put in the parking lot and build it. 
Uh, 130 ish combination of assisted living and memory care. Yeah. It, it's got a long way to go in the yes. approval process. This is this is just uh, in terms of the, yeah. the uh, special exception. They, they have to get um, highway occupancy permits. This plan is going to come back through the through the planning department. So there's a connection there down to the fire department property. That's what that that is, and, and, and at that location, off of that cul-de-sac, that begins to make sense. Um, we think it's it's pointed to the wrong guys. place, yeah. uh, but that's a minor. Does this trigger a light or not? That's a good idea. No. This does not trigger any improvements on East McMurray Road, turning lanes, signals, anything. Just it's such a low traffic generator. It's, Senior yeah. living facilities at the bottom end yeah. of any traffic generating uses, and it's a, it's an assisted living facility, so most of the and people there are right. And any off. traffic they do generates on off peak hours. And what is good. what is the exit point on McMurray opposite? It's across from those businesses um, like the Sorale and the um, yeah, financial homes. partners yeah. there. Yeah, down to the middle school. Correct. And that would be a full access, right? Not just right in, right out, correct? correct? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the other yeah, thing yes. I wanted to bring to council, I don't know, some council members may remember this pre-COVID. Um, we had talked about looking at the possibility of having one day of the week with extended hours. And uh, so that people could come in to get a building permit or file a building permit or, or take care of business in this building. And the way we were going to do that is that um, have um, uh, some of the staff stay late on one night and give them the opportunity then on Friday to leave at lunchtime. There would always be staffing uh, in the building normal, normal business hours. We wouldn't be closing the building on Friday, um, but what it would do is give people an opportunity to deal with us uh, uh, on the in the evening. You know, for some people coming into this building during the day is a problem, yep. and I think it's a way to accommodate that. The thing that I I'm asking council whether you're interested before I ask ask the employees here whether they're interested because. It's been a while since we've had this discussion with everybody, and there's a lot of new employees in the building. So, but oh yeah, I think we were all ready to go on that, right? Yes, we were. Hit, so. <laughs> so you envision yeah. one night? Yeah, one night. Yeah. And we're gonna just do it for a trial period, because what else? You, you know. Well, I think do we'll, all that for three people. Well, a month. And I would agree with you. And um, what would make sense to me is to try to do it over the summertime and see whether or not, and then visit it after the end of the summer to see whether or not there's any value in it. Um, the, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is um, political science. Um, you know, one of the questions I've been asked by a couple different members of council, why is it we have so many political signs when you don't have the same thing occurring in Upper St. Clair? What's in their ordinance that isn't in ours? The fact of the matter is their ordinance mirrors our ordinance um, and, uh, and, and reflects the decision from the Supreme Court with regard to political signs, which pretty much says anything goes when it comes to political science. The one area though, if you wanted, that you could actually control this, and if you think about it, a large cluster of all those political signs occur on township property. So if you look at where the gardens are, if you look at the, the, uh, the, one, the garden that's at Center Church, if you look at the area that Valley Brook and Bebop, those are, that is all township owned properties. We do not permit signs to be placed on our property here. We don't permit signs to be placed inside the parks. I think, and I would have to turn to John to get an answer on this, if you were consistent, if you consistently prohibited anybody placing signs on your property, um, I think you could limit the political signs in those areas. But the question is, do you want to try to do that or not? No. Yes. Who's going to police it? Oh, uh, the same people yeah. who police the signs now. Yeah, but you're going to be wasting more time <laughs> doing that. People are going to do it anyway. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, and they cleaned it up pretty good. I mean, they're almost all gone. They're all downstairs. Well, they will all be gone <laughs> tomorrow because yeah. we'll go out and get the rest of them tomorrow. Yeah. So, I mean, 
It looks terrible, but it looks terrible for what six weeks in the spring and then you know six weeks in the fall, right? Not even that much. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's. Well, I think we were so unsightly this previous oh. month. It was an absolute disgrace to. Well, it's also a change. It used to be, you know, you put up one sign at intersection. Now you get certain candidates that'll put up 12 signs. Within 100 feet. Right, exactly. So I, I, I think we have better things that our employees can be doing than policing that, quite honestly. And I picked up all my signs, so I'm not saying that. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Lauer? Nope. <laughs> I didn't say it. Anybody wants to see anything anybody wants on the next agenda? I, hey, Paul, I, I, I talked to you about this. I, I'd like to have, if we can, if it's possible, an update on all that, uh, you know, those little towers and the 5G stuff we were talking about. Because somebody asked me about that, and I, I, I don't know whatever happened to it, but we, we spent all that time with the, you know, on okay, it a while we, back. Yeah. Well, we can do that. I mean, I can tell you that off the top of my head. Okay. I mean, um, we're, uh, we have permits approved for, for small cell towers, and um, I haven't seen but one of those constructed, but uh, they are approved. Um, the tower that's in the uh, Peterswood Park is under construction. Um, the uh, T-Mobile is pursuing, uh, with the school district, a tower located on top of uh, uh, an uh, electrical uh, stand there. They've also approached the township and wanted to know whether or not we would consider um, placing a uh, antenna on top of this building for T-Mobile, renting space off of our roof. That's a permitted co-location. I don't know whether council would be interested in that or not. Well, I, th I think we should, if we're going to do st something like that, I think we should insist that it be more than one carrier. Because yeah, that's the whole problem. You know, some people yeah. have T-Mobile, and it's great. And some people have AT&T, and then some people have, you know, Verizon, and it's not so good. And I think, to be fair, I mean, if we're going to try to improve everybody's, you know, uh, reception, for lack of a better word, that, that we should insist that they be multiple carriers. The, pr the problem with it is when you talk to the providers, they each have saturation maps for their signal and where their needs are are in different locations and that's why um, you don't necessarily see them on the on Well, the same maybe pole. to the extent that they have shared uh, issues that they should have to do it that way. We could do I, that. I, I, I would think. agree. Yes. And then did you ever find out what that poll was down at the VFW? You know, I do not know. I saw <laughs> that poll, but I have no idea what that is. I got to talk to the people at the VFW. I just noticed it like a week yeah. or so ago. Did you notice yeah, something? So. Do you know what it is? I thought it was one of those towers. That's why no. I called it. Huh? It's some type of radio antenna, though. Is there a way to, to bring the you know vendors in, T-Mobile and Verizon, to kind of like talk to us about the whole township or is that never going to happen? It just, the, the, the cell service hasn't gotten better and we have all of this, you know, these complaints in different areas and I really don't feel like it's really improved significantly for all of the chaos it's causing for the whole township. I mean, at the end of my street is now a, a drop zone and it never was before. So, I mean, I'm just talking personally, but it just, it, putting T-Mobile here and Verizon there and they don't talk. So how is that really benefiting? <laughs> yeah, it's not really benefiting the township. It's well, just spot. I know. think in part what we're seeing, T-Mobile's expansion is related to this service where they're offering your 5G cable service in your house. Mm -hmm. And uh, they need, 5G just needs a whole bunch of towers in order to be effectively covering yeah. an area. Um, Maybe we should get a hold of uh, Crown Castle. But see, your your zoning ordinance doesn't permit towers. New, new towers. That's right. It does not permit new towers, and so uh, that becomes the challenge. It's how to integrate this into either co-location or small cell, so, which okay. doesn't have a lot of yeah. geographic area that it covers. So then you're okay. rapidly increasing the amount. Of can we can't we amend the zoning ordinance to permit well, more? You want to fill this room? <laughs> oh, you can. I, I, I mean, think it, we can you put know, them up there near Mr. Brown's house. Yeah. 
You you can provide for more areas than when towers up, but <laughs> so they, there. <laughs> they have never been popular when they go in. So do you have, we're talking about the small towers before, do you already have a map of where they're going or, and are they proposed to go into residential areas? No, they're not in residential areas. They're coming up East McMurray Road and then down Valley Brook. And, and that was for Verizon. Is that at and the one, Yeah, uh, Telepitz is at and That's the thing. It's, you know, we've got multiple carriers out there. One of them will come to us with an idea of where they want to put equipment, but the others kind of piecemeal and you can never really get them all Rope together to a collective understanding. Uh, you would think this day and age somebody would be able to figure out. It's all proprietary. They want well, they know. They want to close to the chest. It's gotten worse. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like we have like you know. It's not like we're living like in the Shenandoah Valley or something like that. You know, we got mountains on. Some like of us live in a valley. I mean, well, I have no cell service at all. Yeah. So. But I mean, you're still not you know like a thousand feet below. You know, mountain top or anything. It just doesn't make sense that this is such an issue. But uh, hey, anything else anybody wants to see on the next agenda? All right, we are adjourned.